beautiful Cancerians, welcome to my channel. This is Baba Jolie here with your yearly reading for 2022. I've already cleansed your space and have meditated on your cards. For those of you who are returning, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for all your wonderful likes, shares and subscribes. I'm truly grateful for all your beautiful energy. Just a little reminder that this is a general reading, not a one-to-one -one reading, just so you're aware. Also, please be mindful, scammers are about to pretend to be me and lots of other tarot readers. I do not do personal readings, I do not take your money, e-gifts, donations. I'm not on Facebook, WhatsApp, PayPal, Telegram or Patreon. I will never ask you for your credit card details and I will never ask you for personal details either. So if anyone masquerading as me asks you for anything at all, please report them or ignore them. It is a scam, okay? Let's move straight on to your reading. I'm going to cleanse your space hourly. So so please be mindful there's going to be three loud sounds. Let us begin. Okay, my beautiful Cancerians, you should be feeling that full force of the sun in Capricorn. Uh, that really makes us feel quite pragmatic and practical. Thinking about setting intentions, that's why at the beginning of the year, we tend to uh, think about the year ahead, of course, and set a plan in motion. So you uh, may have been thinking about those intentions and the work that needs to be done to get you to where you want to go. Um, it's all about strategy uh, as we move throughout uh, January. Um, now. In 2020 and 2021, we had some very difficult planetary alignments. So you may have been feeling a very difficult, um, well, I mean, collectively, we've all been going through a major pandemic. So things have been very difficult, of course. Um, but things get a little bit easier this year because the planetary alignment is not so... Um, tumultuous, let's put it that way. However, there are still some twists and turns, I'm not gonna lie to you, Saturn and Uranus will be direct, um, so that brings obstruction, rules, regulations, um, and resistance, as well as Uranus being a little bit of a, a teenage, sort of unruly planet kind of energy, bringing shock changes, okay? Now, to take the edge off that energy, we do have Jupiter in Pisces until May, which means there is a lot of um, positive energy, a lot of... Um, when things happen like in surprise or plot to his energy, it brings um, opportunity or abundance. So some of those shock energies that come towards you uh, and all of us collectively will be actually positive shifts, okay? Now Venus is also in retrograde until the 29th of January. So that will make you feel a little bit nostalgic, thinking about the past, uh, thinking about situations or people from the past. Also, they'll be thinking about you. So this is prime time for people uh, that you are no longer in contact with reaching out whether it's a friend uh, a family member that you haven't heard from in a while also exes uh, this is prime time for people to reach out because they're longing they're in that longing stage now we're going to see what is coming on in for you um, and uh, we will see uh, what spirit wants you to look at as we move throughout the year 2022 okay also we do have uh, mercury going retrograde uh not for long which is quite a positive thing it goes in retrograde on the 14th of uh, january and um it basically is just until the beginning of february there so expect a little bit of brain fog or uh, miscommunication emails going astray and that sort of thing um, so just be a little bit mindful of that. Um, it's not detrimental energy, but it can be very frustrating, okay? So let us see what is coming in for you. This is a bit of a different reading. I'm going to get the overall energy of what spirit would like you to focus on for the year, and then we're going to go month by month, okay? So uh, first off, here we have solitude. Take a break from life, routines and schedules to be with yourself. It's number 14, so that is about coming back into balance. Now, there may be something that you're trying to focus on in terms of achieving for the year ahead. You may feel like it's something that you have to do alone. This does not mean that you're going to be alone. This means that you're in a solitary energy to reconnect to your center. It says here, withdrawal, singleness, detachment. So I really feel like you're going to be connecting or reconnecting with nature, uh, but also with your higher self. I do feel like there's something here that you've got to do alone so whether th this is something that you promised yourself uh, I mean for example you may have promised yourself this year I'm gonna learn a language because they just keep showing me um, well they're actually showing me uh, different forms of writing 
Uh, they're showing me hieroglyphics, of course. Uh, you know, I, I guess that's like uh, first civilization kind of uh, writing. There's lots of different, it's almost like I'm seeing lots of different texts, okay? It's not just hieroglyphics. I'm seeing texts over the ages. So I, either you're someone who actually studies um, writing. I'm not really sure what that is called. So I do apologize if that's uh, what you do for a living. I'm not really sure uh, what you would call someone like that. Um, but maybe you're thinking about writing or discovering, uh, but because there's so many different forms of languages, I'm seeing Cyrillic, I'm seeing so much, uh, I'm scrying at the same time as doing your reading. Perhaps you're choosing a language to learn. Um, so this could mean that you're taking some time out for you to really um, sort of enhance your skills or enrich your, your brain, your soul in some way. Um, or it could be that you're thinking about uh, going to different places. You know, they're just showing me the writing uh, and it's so many different forms of writing. So, um, yeah, just so many wonderful. I feel like the, the one that they're showing me right now is, um, I almost like want to say it's Sri Lankan or something like that. There's lots of different um, texts coming through. Uh, now they're showing me like French. So there's so much. So, you know, I can't really pin it to one particular country or one particular um, language. So, uh, you know, maybe that's you sort of deciding um, where you want to be, or, uh, you know, you are someone who studies writing, or words are important um, in some way. To, I mean, words are important in general. You know, what we speak about, we bring about. So it's very important, number one, the things that we say out loud, and then number two, the things that we tell ourselves, or the way that we speak to ourselves, about ourselves, very important, okay? Because we start to become the thing that we tell ourselves. So if we start to think that we cannot do something, then we're right because we actually talk ourselves out of it. We, it's almost like we're bullying ourselves. We, you know, in a way say we can't do this or we don't think we can do this. So we got to talk ourselves up, okay? And, and really mean it, of course. Um, but this solitude energy, I feel like it's time to sort of, um, because you're such a wonderful, uh, caring, loving uh, person, my beautiful Cancerians, and you know, the the Queen of Cups really represents your sign. It is an overgiver sometimes. So uh, giving all of your wonderful time, energy, love. Uh, you may be exhausted. You may have felt over the last couple of years you've always been the giver. I uh, feel like now it's time to receive and, and sort of uh, give to yourself first. So that is definitely a very important uh, sort of message. Find pockets throughout the year to find solitude and peace and reconnect to your center. Now we also have Divine Feminine. Okay, so uh, we all have like uh, an energy, a masculine and feminine energy, uh, you know, which we access at different uh, parts in our life. Um, it says, unleash your creative side, write, paint, dream up new ideas. So again, you know, maybe that's what that writing was all about there. Maybe your creative writing. Uh, it says, nurturing receptivity, a woman. So I feel this is, I mean, it's number 24 there. When you reduce it, two plus four is six, the number of love. Um, and I feel like this is about you um, sort of doing something that you love that comes from the heart um, and really causing a lot of peace in your world. There's a unification here. I feel like your creative skills will actually bring you into connection with uh, different soul tribe members, okay? So although we've got like um, a solitary energy, we've also got this reconnection. So I feel like you're gonna be doing that quite a lot um, throughout 2022, going off perhaps on retreats by yourself Yourself or uh, rediscovering um, s parts of yourself that may have la lain hidden for a while. But then I feel like also you're going to find people who are on a very similar spiritual quest. I feel very philosophical sitting in your energy for 2022. Maybe you're asking yourself the bigger questions. What's it all about? Where do I fit into the grand scheme of things? Um, but you're definitely going to be um, releasing talents um, that maybe you felt um, were hidden or you're actually honing them to uh, be successful because I feel there's a lot of success coming your way uh, but this is about you sort of reconnecting to who you are and expressing yourself fully. We've also got rushing in okay uh, it says you're manifesting something or someone into existence rather quickly fast action taking off quickly rushing in it's number 56 when you reduce it 5 plus 6 is 11 so that is a soul path number this is meant to be this is faded energy so whatever it is you're manifesting, um, whether it's a big goal, a dream, or whether it's the small stuff. Uh, success looks differently to everybody, but whatever it is you're focusing your attention on, it's coming in quite quickly in 2022. Um, I feel like this is something that you've had your eye on or you've been trying for a while for. It's going to manifest on the physical plane. We also have questioning. Well, there you go. I definitely uh, felt that energy questioning. And it says here, stop thinking too much. There's 
there is purpose in not having all the answers, doubt, skeptical, confusion, overthinking. So I really feel, you know, whilst we can ask ourselves the bigger questions, we shouldn't get lost or obsessed about the details or the not knowing. Sometimes we're not meant to have the answer because, you know, it's, it's about being comfortable with what we know in this moment, especially you being a very intuitive sign, my beautiful Cancerians, your intuition is key. It will bring you to where you need to go. So I feel like when you bog yourself down with the details, as in, you know, being obsessive about getting answers, sometimes we lose time on things that, you know, in the grand scheme of things, they may not matter, okay? So uh, they just really want you to be aware of what is important and what is not important. It's number 52, when you reduce that, five plus two is seven, which is a chariot card. Again, this is your energy, uh, Cancerian energy is a chariot card. This is movement forward, overcoming obstacles, leaving it all behind, okay? So if something's been bugging you and you, you can't get an answer to it, sometimes it's okay to just drop it like a hot potato and say, it's okay. I don't have the answers. If I obsess over this anymore, I'm just going to lose peace of mind and time, wasting time. And more uh, sort of times than not, as soon as you stop obsessing about something and you release it, the answer comes to you, okay? Uh, the more we focus on something and really like try, it's like a watch pot, it never boils, okay? But as soon as you take your focus off it, you walk away, all of a sudden it's bubbling over. So just be mindful about that sort of energy. That could be popping up in various pockets of your life or you found yourself obsessing over certain things. Now we all do it, okay? I'm not pointing a finger. We all have moments of really overthinking. Spirit just wants you to find inner peace 2022 is all about that. Very difficult, I know, especially since we're going through a major pandemic, but I mean, planetary alignment shows that things are shifting and whilst we're still going through a difficult period, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I even believe your last reading was called It's Always Darkest Before the Dawn. That's the energy that I get here. There, there is a light in 2022 for you. Okay, we've got anger as well. So it's about releasing anger. Um, it says here, where there is anger, there is always pain underneath. Conflict, resentment, arguments, clash. Um, they really want me to give it to something. Well, this is how they're giving it to me, so I'm going to give it to you the way they were giving it to me. If, for example, you and another person were arguing with each other, it's because both of you care, okay? You care about something enough to have an argument about it, okay? But if the other person is kind of like, meh, doesn't even engage in anything anymore. It means they have removed themselves from a situation, either to process it or they just don't let it have any hold over them anymore. So they really want you to look at anger in a different way, okay? Um, it's number 13 when you reduce it, seven plus six is 13. So this is about transforming your energy and recognizing that, you know, of course some anger is healthy. It's a, it's a natural human bodily trait, um, you know, Everybody is trying to be Zen and be peaceful, but that is not a human uh, attribute for us to be our whole lives. Sometimes we have moments where we get angry. We have a flash of anger or we have a seething anger that we keep with us, resentment. We have different forms. The human condition is very complex, but it's about noticing it and noticing how we can change how we feel about things. We can let it dominate us and destroy our day or our week or our year, or we can release it and say, you know what? I can't change that. So I'm just going to process it and let it go so that you lighten your karmic load, okay? So with this, um, it's about recognizing the root of the pain, okay? Getting, because <clears throat> whenever you think about arguments, between two people, you know, there could be um, arguments. Um, the argument rarely at first is about the actual thing, okay? So if you, for example, um, you know, you could be really angry with somebody and you're watching television and they turn over the station and you're like, I was watching that. And they're like, well, I don't want to watch that program. You start arguing over something really mundane and something that's not really important. But the root cause of it is something else. It stems from something else. But we argue over the trivial. It's like the, ca the, the straw that broke the camel's back. So it's about identifying and asking yourself in five years time, will this really matter? And if it doesn't, why are you wasting your energy on something like anger, hurting your in your insides, okay? Anger 
when you think about it, it starts creating adrenaline, it starts uh, pumping uh, the, the heart in a, uh, you know, an extra sort of strong way. It, it creates certain, um, I don't, I'm not really scientific, but they're, this, they're showing me an image right now of the insides and what it does to you and how it actually is held, anger is held in the organs. So um, I'm just gonna leave it there because especially when I personally don't really know what I'm talking about, I don't like, I, I'll give you what they're giving me, but if I can't really make a, an informed decision about something, I tend to sort of like go, okay, I'm gonna just go and research that before I talk about it more. But they just want you to be aware of holding anger, okay? So let's see, move on from that. We have treasure chest, success reaping the rewards. So definitely, as I said, I was feeling this energy that you are um, going to have some major breakthroughs throughout the year. Jupiter is going to bestow a lot of blessings on you, my beautiful Cancerians. So this is about the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, success does look differently for everybody. So whatever it is you're manifesting, you're finding, um, you know, abundance and then some more for like a rainy day. Uh, we've also got Stingray. Be aware of your surroundings. Mindfulness. Okay, be aware of your surroundings, mindfulness. That's why they will really want you to take some time out to be connected to your center so that you can really check in with your intuition um, as well as your outer surroundings. Your intuition, think of it like a sonar, okay? You are in the center of that sonar and you're picking up the undercurrent or you're picking up uh, things that you're feeling are either completely off or you're not sure about. Your gut instinct is your first gauge to knowing something, whether you can see it with the physical, with the eyes in, on the physical plane or not. If intuitively you are feeling something's not right, go with that gut instinct, okay? So really keep an eye on your, um, you know, stingrays are beautiful creatures, okay? So incredible, you know, what many years, many, many years ago, I, I swam and, uh, you know, naturally not in a tank, like in the sea and some sort of swam past me and I was just in awe of these beautiful creatures and they were just so peaceful just going on by but they have the power with that barb in their tail to just, you know, completely sort of attack if they feel threatened. And of course, you know, uh, they were just sort of placid creatures, just peacefully swimming by. But I feel, you know, just because, um, and I'm getting, I'm picking up this energy because it is about your energy, Cancerians, which is when most of the people that I know who are Cancerians, they're so uh, wonderful to be with, so caring, so nurturing, but you cross a Cancerian, oh, MG. You don't see that anger or that coming because you've got such a warm heart, but you don't really like to go to that space because it's not a natural trait that you like to live in. Okay. So only when you are pushed to the extreme, do you get to that point. So I do feel like this is also you being aware of, um, you know, lashing out um, and what it d does to you because that anger card came up as well. So just little things to think about. We've all got little things that we have to think about. Um, so I'm just going to move on month to month now, but there's a lot of success coming towards you, uh, really connecting to your center, a lot more of a spiritually peaceful year for you. Um, and let's see what is happening now. Um, thank you so much, spirit guides, great angels. Can you please guide my beautiful? Now, in terms of planetary alignment, um, What's been flagging up for me in every reading pretty much and when I've been doing my own personal sort of energy for the year to, it's very hard, I can't read for myself, but I can sort of pick up the energy of um, the collective. And what I've found is April and June could be trouble hotspots collectively. Um, and by trouble, I mean um, interesting shifts collectively. So it could be more restrictions, for example. I mean, you've got the hangman in uh, April time, so that's a pause energy. So um, let's see what else is happening there um, for you. Some signs are having a more positive um, sort of time during April and June than others, uh, but I feel collectively there is a bit of a shift going on around there. So there could be some big world news around about April or June. Um, but I haven't gone, um, I normally scry for that. I haven't seen any images. I haven't done the scrying yet for the year for that just yet. So thank you so much, Spirit Guides. Okay. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides. Going angels, can you please guide? Now, right now, they're actually showing me someone hanging a picture. 
So either you are hanging a picture as you're listening to this reading. If that's you, there's something in this message for you. It's not going to resonate for everyone, of course. Uh, so please take it as it resonates. I mean, hanging a picture. So, uh, I mean, hmm. now this could be a picture that someone gifted you um, and you're just finally getting around to framing it and putting it up or something. That's what I'm feeling. Or it could be that um, you... Uh, You've had, I just feel like there's a picture here that you've had for a little while and now you're finding a place to hang it or something. So if that's you, there's something in this message for you. Again, it's not going to resonate for everyone. If it does not resonate for you, I'm not really sure spiritually what it would mean. So I'm going to have to leave that there. I'll always be honest and say, I don't know how it resonates collectively to people. Sometimes it's going to be very precise. Okay, so I'll, I'll leave that there. Now, January is the lover's card. So this is about choice making choices based on your heart at a grassroots level the lover's card used to be called the choice card so this means that you are making decisions from the heart in january uh, but also that affect the rest of the year as i said that sun in capricorn lets us um you know get very pragmatic get really honest about what we really want to do so i feel like you're connecting to your heart and asking where does your heart truly reside where do you want to be this is also about unification harmony uh, you're you're setting your intentions based on balance harmony as we move throughout the year so really good strong foundation for the year ahead the lover's card is that gemini energy of duality so you may be actually multitasking a lot in january and doing uh you know maybe even having a second stream of income in some way um because i i, I just see they're actually showing me two um well it's very odd i'm not really sure what it is uh, they're showing me two it's almost like if I was to describe it, it's like rail tracks and they're showing me two coins rolling along a rail track. So I don't, I don't really know what that is. Um, they're not actually rail tracks. I don't feel like they are because when I, I don't see them as being, I'm not really, I'm not really sure. Maybe you have to travel for money or something, or, but they're showing me two lines with a coin spinning along it. So I don't know what that would be, but maybe it means that money is coming to you or you have to travel or you're setting up some sort of work thing um, to maybe two sort of uh, jobs there you've got and um, you're having steady progress in that you're working towards something is what I feel from the energy. Uh, the lover's card also is about soulmate energy, of course. Now this isn't typically about a love reading, um, but if it comes up, I will mention it in the reading. So this is about you getting clear on what you want in terms of relationship uh, as well, signifying a force that binds two entities together to create a wholeness. So if you're single, you may be thinking, right, okay, this year I'm gonna really focus on love and I'm gonna get out there a little bit more or gonna put myself out there to find love. Um, I feel this is a personal decision, so I'm just going to clarify. This is also about you communicating from the heart uh, because they're showing me the throat chakra for you. So I feel like you're being, you're always honest and open, um, but sometimes, um, especially if it's really important, um, I just feel like sometimes you keep your you keep things to yourself a lot okay you're very private in your energy um, that's probably because you're a water element so you're very sensitive but some things you don't it's almost like you don't speak up okay that's changing in 2022 I feel very much like you're opening up a little bit more uh, just let you know I'm clarifying using this particular deck which is the uh, Tarot of the Mystical Moments and I'm only using the uprights in this deck as well as this one the White Witch Tarot in the other decks I'm using the reversals as well because I like to get a, uh, a balanced deeper energy view of what's going on there Nine of Pentacles yeah so slow moving money but money all the same um, and also, if you're looking for love, this is a slow moving night, someone who's reliable, dependable, someone who's patient, kind, hard, hard, hard working, someone you can trust, someone who's loyal. So definitely there is a solid offer coming on in here. I'm going to go one more. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides, Great Angels. Can you please guide my beautiful Cancerians? The Eight of Pentacles. So this is about loving what you do as well, focusing on your craft, enjoying your finances. Eight of Pentacles is about learning um, to be more creative. Uh, also, earn money creatively. It could be that you're learning a new skill. You may have put yourself on a course. Um, you're opening up the year. Uh, as I said, you know, it could even be that creative writing course or something like that. It's something that's creative. As you can see, she is 
that's a butterfly right there. So she is changing butterflies to connect to the death card energy, number 13, which you got there earlier, which is about transformation. You're transforming your finances, getting a little bit more creative. Um, but the Eight of Pentacles means you're mastering your craft. So whatever it is you do, even if you work in an office and you're number crunching, okay, you're finding creative ways to enjoy your work and build on your finances. Uh, you're setting a plan in motion. The Eight of Pentacles also means that, you know, this is, um, you're eagerly embracing an opportunity um, and you may be learning you might earn as you learn or you're there's definitely an, an opportunity coming on in here that you're very excited about now if this is a, f a financial job opportunity i feel like you know this could be something that you're doing as well as a position that you've got at the moment if not it's definitely one that's going to bring in more money long term and you'll leave the other one uh, this seems to be like a main focus so some of you would have put out your resume for example and there's a, an offer coming on in if you lost your job because of the pandemic um, over the last uh, year or so or a couple of years I do feel like you've waited a long time for a wonderful uh, financial opportunity to come up January looks really good for choices I feel like there's a couple of choices coming on in but there's one that really hits the spot that you're like that's it that's the one okay the um, King of, sorry the the Knight of Pentacles is basically Knights uh, tend to connect to messenger energy okay as well as uh, like pages bring news um, but the Knight uh, sort of delivers action with it. So I felt like this is something that you've been working hard towards. This is you sort of persevering on something and making some really good decisions. Your stamina and your dedication is putting you in the flow to receive more money and learn as well at the same time. I feel like you're determined to succeed and know with these two cards that your efforts will uh, pay off, okay? Um, the Lover's card also asks you, is your heart really in it? I feel like with these cards, your heart is really going to be in something. So if, for example, you're feeling a lack of motivation or drive and you wanted to seek opportunity elsewhere, then know that the time is right for you to uh, sort of, I feel an opportunity is coming in. Uh, it may be towards the third week to the last week of January because that night is a slow moving energy. Okay, just so you're aware. Um, now this could be, again, I just keep getting this energy of duality of having a secondary stream of income. So you may be, there may have been something here that you were thinking about doing whether it's a creative skill, know that you can earn money at it. You're very good at it. You know, the Eight of Pentacles says you're a master of your craft. So financially, you can be rewarded for what you do, okay? So very positive energy there. Now we've got the Hermit energy. Interesting that we got the Hermit energy um, and the Lover's card energy. Um, it's sort of, I mean, the Lover's card tends to show up in the February position, uh, but you've got it in January. So you could be opening yourself up to meet uh, somebody new in love. If you're already in a relationship with that with somebody as you're in January, I feel like you and this person, you deepen your commitment. And uh, I feel both of you may even think about working with each other in some way is what I'm picking up on. So uh, I do feel like very rewarding relationship. Um, as we move into um, February, we've got the Hermit energy. Now, of course, the Hermit energy is like a little temporary time out. So as I said, you're going to feel, you're going to find pockets throughout the year where you just take a little step back. Um, I feel February, April are times for you to do that. Um, and the Hermit energy is about wisdom. It's about knowledge. It's about seeking truth. Okay. So, um, I feel like you're gaining enlightenment. Now the Hermit takes himself out of life temporarily to really focus on inward okay so although the hermit energy can mean that you're in a solitary energy it's something that you are activating so if you're meeting someone new in terms of love um, it doesn't mean that by February you're going to be alone again it just means um, that you may be taking some time out to think is this a person I'm really into is this a person I could really see myself with in the future so there's just a little withdrawal going off radar in February uh, for you uh, in order to look inwards now, let me just clarify that energy for you. The Hierophant. This is knowledge, okay? Also, the Hierophant is you thinking about commitment. The Hierophant is a commitment card. Sometimes it talks about marriage. I mean, some of you may be thinking about, do you want to marry this person? Do you want to settle down? Or you may be looking at the way you look at love and whether you truly want to um, settle down with somebody. The Hierophant is about learning though. It is about tra uh, tradition. It's about expectations. So when we've got the Hermit and the Hierophant energy, this is you looking inwards to see, are you on the right track? 
Do you still want to be doing what you're doing? Where do you need to learn a little bit more? You use your inner wisdom to gauge whether you have met your own expectations. And if you have not, it's about restructuring so that you can activate that. Now, also some of you, they're giving me, some of you are going to be really interested in your family tree around about February. This could be because someone from your past or someone reaches out from your family that you haven't heard from in a while starts talking about family tree, uh, you know, or ancestry in some way. Um, expect that energy towards the end of January. 29th of January is, I mean, Venus is in retrograde until the 29th of January, but they're showing me from 29th of January onwards. There's something here about family tree or reconnecting to a member of a of your family that you haven't heard from in a long time is what they're showing me um now the hierophant is about commitment so i feel like you're looking at where you need to focus a little bit more um and there's something here that you are doing that is going to be very very successful and when you need to focus on being successful um or when you need to focus on something to move you through to your goal or dream, uh, we tend to sort of um, withdraw and sort of remove restrictions or remove distractions. Um, so I feel in February, there's something here that you've got to do by yourself. I'm going to go one more on that for you. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides, Great Angels. Can you please guide? Ooh. Do you want those? I think you do. Yeah. We've got the King of Pentacles, money. We've got the Knight of Wands. We've got the Strength and we've got the Judgment. Okay, so I'm getting two energies here, my beautiful Cancerians. Uh, so um, the first thing is I've got a re there's a real sort of like potential for a um, passion project is what I'm getting here with this Knight of Wands. Um, this is about your determination to succeed. This is something that you're really excited about. Uh, it could be sort of a new creative action um, that you sort of are motivated to do. I mean, basically, wands are all about passion. They're all about drive, enthusiasm, achieving. So I feel like you're going to do something that you really, that's quite daring, actually, something that takes you out of a comfort zone that will bring a lot of money. Okay, that King of Pentacles is about making a very strong financial decision um, that will lead to um, you know, a really good investment there. So I feel like there's something creative here that brings a lot of money and it sort of makes you unstoppable. I feel like you feel this energy rising up within you to uh, trust your vision and act on something. You may launch something at this time. That's why you need to really focus. And I mean, the judgment card says this is your life purpose. This is your soul path. It's something that's been whispering at you for a while. So it could be this uh, second uh, stream of income or the second job there. The judgment says this is your purpose and this is your true prosperity. Okay, that's what this card literally means. So you have everything you need to manifest and move forward with purpose. Um, and, you know, this, the strength card is you have the courage to do it. You have the courage to succeed and be very, very successful. Um, and so this may be something that took a long time to nurture or get to a position where you could launch it. Okay, so I feel like there's a major breakthrough here. Um, I feel like the powers that be, the, hier the hierarchy, people are starting to take notice. But it's your focus your laser-like concentration that gets you to where you need to get to, okay? So I feel really exciting breakthrough there. Now, I am getting a secondary energy. Uh, I will pull another card on it, but I'm, I'm picking up on somebody here who... Um, there is someone from your past. This is, I mean, we're literally... The judgment card can also be a card of second chances, okay? So I feel like there's someone here who uh, you may have felt was transitory or uh, no longer in your world, um, whether it's a friend or a family member, you know, whether it's connected to the ancestry or family tree in some way. Um, there's someone here who wants a second chance and I feel like they want to invest fully in a relationship with you. Um, now, a relationship doesn't have to be romantic. As I said, it could be a friendship. It could be a, a family dynamic. So let me just clarify that a little bit further. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides, Great Angels. Can you please guide? Queen of Pentacles. Now, this could be someone that you separated from because we've got a King of Pentacles and a Queen of Pentacles there, okay? This is someone that you felt uh, was either dependent on you or you felt uh, in some way that uh, the vibes were off. You did not connect. You may have felt like this is someone who gave you the impression they didn't need you, okay, um, sometimes. Um, this is someone that either you may have lived with or you may have considered part of your soul tribe, someone you really cared about, you nurtured, um, but they withdrew their energy. Either they went off-grid or they went distant on you. 
Ace of Swords. They're coming on in to talk to you. There's definitely communication. They, I feel like they want a breakthrough. Um, they've been thinking about you a lot. Swords are about the mind, uh, communication, thinking, mental conflict. So I feel like this person has a desire to talk to you. So February, I mean, it is the month of... Um, Valentine's Day, of course, so it could be someone from your past reaching out, um, you know, to talk. I would be, um, I mean, it looks like this person, I'm just going to see what this person's intentions are. I feel like they want to talk. Can you show me any further intentions? Whoa. Four swords. So this person is in a solitary energy. Um, I feel like they are recovering from something. If this sort of person tends to come on in whenever uh, they go through some difficult times in their life, whilst you are a wonderful person, my beautiful Cancerians, you're not somebody's emotional crutch all the time. Okay, so just so you're aware, but you know the situation. This person has been thinking about you a lot. They're curious about what you're up to. They want to talk. So, so far, I feel like this person may be keeping their eye on you or they, they're you're on their mind a lot. So I feel like this person wants to recover this um, relationship or friendship or whatever it is. Uh, thank you so much, Spirit Guides. Hangman. Okay, this person's got a new perspective on whatever has gone on between you both. So do expect someone to reconnect with you and want to, um, they want to find out a little bit more about what you're up to. Okay, and I feel like this person is thinking about you and your relationship in a different way. And I feel like they want to be more of a part of your life from February onwards is what I'm getting, okay? Now, as we move into uh, March, we've got the Strength card. So this is about your courage. This is about your strength. This is about self-love as well, self-care. So I feel like you really are following your heart in 2022, but also I feel like you are um, opening your third eye um, heavily and you're surrendering to the universe. I feel like there's an energy here of you sacrificing a lot for your goals, your dreams, your family, your friends, all of the time. And I feel like now, it's your moment to focus on you with that strength card. Strength card is number eight, and that tends to be the number of the self. Okay, so let me just um, clarify that energy for you. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides, Great Angels. Can you please clarify the strength card? We've got the Six of Wands, and we've got the Ace of Wands. So real breakthrough here. Some sort of, um, you know passion project or something that you're trying to achieve there's news that comes on in that shows that you are having a major breakthrough this is celebration and a success uh, six of wands tends to be um, about you stepping into the spotlight or aligning yourself um, into a position where people are taking notice of you for um, something that you're passionate about it could be you stepping into the, to the limelight so if you're a performer or you're very creative because ace of wands is like jackpot energy this is like a desire to create or a new project it sees you become very very successful as you can see with that hummingbird there it indicates that all your hard work there is sweet reward at the end of it okay you may have felt like you've been on a treadmill where you're just doing 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 and not getting anywhere but that's all about to change and march is a real prime time for things to get really positive for you i feel like this is you gaining some sort of recognition or news um or an award even for what you did. This is like a victory. This is like a win, okay? To get those two cards together, I feel like this is like a major, the way they're showing it to me, this is a major part in your story of life, okay? So this is a major month for you. Um, so the strength card is a Leo energy and Leos tend to have that light where they shine out, okay? So I feel like this is about you shining your wonderful light, expressing yourself fully, especially creatively, uh, but experiencing another win, okay, as it were. But this is a, a reward. Um, this is more than money. This is about being appreciated. This is about being acknowledged. This is about being seen truly for your contribution to people's lives, to, uh, you know, uh, to your work, or whatever it is you do. If you, if you don't work, it's to the people that you care about. I feel like people are noticing all the things that you do for people, Cancerians, because you do so much, okay? And sometimes it goes unnoticed or unrewarded, but you don't do things to be rewarded. You're just naturally a carer. But I feel like people are going to really notice how strong you are, the courage that you have to unconditionally love, even sometimes at your own detriment, because you tend to love with uh, all of your heart. And sometimes you get hurt by people because they don't realize how much you actually give. But I feel like this is a real month for you being noticed. Um, by people, not just in a way where it's like your family as well. I feel like this is success 
coming towards you um, too. Now in April, we have the hangman energy. So there's something here they're showing me that you were stuck on or you have been stuck with that you've maybe been overthinking about it. I feel like this is something that maybe you're holding on to for a while and it's got really, it's got really tense. Okay, whatever this thing that you're holding on to, I feel like you're having a real breakthrough um, with this in April. Now, I do feel like there is a bit of a pause for you in April as well, but let's see what that is. But as you can see, this figure, you know, as you can see, it's like a matter of time. I feel like this has been going on for some time for you. Uh, you may have felt like there was um, either a missed opportunity or you felt someone was being very selfish in your world or you've been dealing with someone who stabbed you in the back as it were, was a traitor, betrayed you. There's something here that's made you feel a lot of sadness, a lot of pain. And sometimes it's felt very, very suffocating uh, because it sort of washes over you and starts to make you feel like you're overthinking it and you can't help it. Now we all get those feelings. We all get those moments of obsession over something. It's coming up in your reading for the second time, but they're showing me a real breakthrough on it. As you can see, this hand is breaking through all of the mud, all of the gunk, all of the nasty stuff to really transform and reach up for the sun. So you're having a breakthrough as you move towards the sun. So the sun is the most positive, um, auspicious card in the deck. So I feel like you're having a real breakthrough here, but it's taken a while. So this could be a personal revelation. Let's have a look and see what they've got. The world card, you're getting closure on something and le letting it all go, okay? So this is something that may have been uh, some sort of emotional baggage that you had that you felt was um, either um, you had lack of closure on it or it made you feel doubtful. Um, I feel like there's something here where you're leaving it all behind, okay? Um, in order to create a brand new cycle for yourself. Uh, you're. It's almost like all the baggage from the past is finally being let let go, okay? And I feel like, um, I mean, look at that, all those, I mean, this could be that you've been waiting for a move as well, uh, and it's been um, a really tough time. You're searching for stuff, trying to, you know, compromise and find the right place for you. You may be thinking about whether you want to, um, maybe been holding off on moving to a different country for a while or something like that because the world card can talk about emigration so some of you will be wanting to move i feel that especially cancerians it's a big deal your home is your sanctuary so wherever you uh, whilst you love travel and adventure you need that home base okay because you're such a you're a water element just like me i'm scorpio um you know it's nice to sort of travel and be flexible and be fluid, but we need a sanctuary, somewhere where we can come back, feel protected, and feel is our sort of expression of ourselves, where we can feel comfortable. So I feel like this is a really big deal for you, whether you are emigrating or traveling or um, maybe even traveling for work. I feel like there's definitely some sort of upheaval that's really positive in April for you that brings uh, accomplishment satisfaction completion so some of you may find the home of your dreams and complete on that but it is a brand new cycle where you're leaving any baggage behind and you're seeing things really clearly there's lots of clarity there now we step into may may we've got the moon card so this is you my beautiful cancerians this is your element the moon card is about releasing illusions it's about uh, using your intuition so this is a prime time where your intuition is so important okay and it's just before june Okay, so I feel your your radar is saying something's not right. So you could be picking up on planetary alignments or you could be picking up on moon energy because you are very much influenced by the moon. Um, I feel this is something where you're feeling a little bit defensive. Okay, you're in fight or flight mode in this particular month, just so you're aware. Now, the moon energy can bring plot twists. It can bring you uh, sort of unseen changes, but you make those changes voluntarily when they show up. So you're in that flexible energy. So for example, there could be an opportunity that lays hidden in the shadows and it just pops up on you know all of a sudden and you may feel defensive at first because it's unknown to you but then when you sort of uh, investigate it a little bit further you're like oh okay I can get down with this, this is quite good I'm, I'm fine with that so let me just see what that is for you with that moon energy it's almost like in May you're seeing with your other set of eyes okay which is your intuition your gut instinct can you please clarify that moon energy for them thank you so much i'm sure grateful we've got the ten of wands we've got the seven of cups and we've got the wheel of fortune so wheel of fortune really indicates that this is a surprise you intuitively you feel it coming but 
in terms of seeing it, you do not see it coming, but intuitively you know. So I feel like you are, it's almost like forewarned is forearmed. So I feel like you're ready, whatever this is. Now the Ten of Wands is exhausting energy. So be mindful not to burn yourself out at the, uh, you know, burn your candle at both ends because you need energy to be able to feel intuitively. When we burn ourselves out, we feel disconnected from our center and we find it really hard to even understand how we feel. Sometimes we feel numb. It's because you're burnt out. You're doing so many things. The Ten of Water also, sorry, the Ten of Wands also can be about, you know, releasing anything that is no longer necessary in your world, okay? Uh, but the Seven of Cups says you have a choice, okay? So I feel like um, there's a lot, a lot of choices here about um, baggage, about relationships, about emotions. Um, you know, the Ten of Wands can be that sometimes there's a graceful ending. We don't always have to like suddenly burn a bridge as it were. But as you can see with that Ten of Wands in particular, this figure is blossoming. There's spiritual awareness here, okay? Um, and there's so many flowers, it's become burdensome. So it takes a lot. It is a lot of hard work to become spiritually aligned. It takes a lot of hard work to really sort of um, prosper and blossom. So I feel like the Seven of Cups is you looking at um, your options, but also, I mean, she's pointing at a star. So I feel like this is about a wish, okay? A wish, a dream come true, because it's an opportunity that just pops out of nowhere. But it may require more work okay, is what I'm getting. With the Wheel of Fortune, it means surprise opportunity. Surprise, you know, like a lucky break or something works out perfectly. Um, all your hard work sort of pays off perfectly and gives you a set of options, but it's something you've been dreaming about for a while. Um, so I'm just gonna pull a quick card on that 10 of Wands to get a little bit of a closer um, look at it. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides, Spirit Angels. Can you please? Um, now they're really showing me uh, it looks like, it looks like cabbage. I gotta be honest, it looks like a, it's like a, a light white green cabbage. Light white green cabbage, yeah. So either you are cooking as you're listening to this reading or you just bought a cabbage. Maybe you've got a cabbage in the store in your hand as you're listening to this reading. White, it's like, you know that sort of really light green cabbage? and they call it white cabbage or something like that. So um, it's that. So, I mean, I'm not really sure what that means for you. They're actually showing me the physical vegetable, or is it a salad? No, I think it's a vegetable. Um, white cabbage, because I mean, there's a white cabbage butterfly, right? Um, but they're not showing me a butterfly, they're just showing me that. Anyway, I'm not really sure how it resonates. It may be something that you found is instrumental to your diet that is really good for you. I mean, it is good for you, but there may be a reason why um, you had to seek it out for some sort of ailment that you have or something like that. So please take it as it resonates, I'm not really sure. Now, to clarify, we have the Death Card and the Seven of Pentacles. So I feel like this is, you know, it feels like your struggle is changing. Okay, it feels like something you've been waiting patiently for, working really hard on. Okay, as you can see, the Seven of Pentacles is about, um, you know, working hard, uh, patiently waiting for uh, the crop to grow, as it were, and recognizing that all that hard work, whilst it is prosperous, whilst it is blossoming, all those pentacles are growing, it's not ripe for the picking. There's only one pentacle there. But the Death card signals a change. So there's a change in your finances that will bring you success. It'll give you a lot of options. Um, but I feel that heavy energy, this is something that you work really hard for. Okay, so I feel um, there's a real positive breakthrough, but you may have to do a little bit of extra heavy living, uh, lifting rather, uh, in terms of uh, this opportunity. So for example, there may be uh, an opportunity that arises that means you have to work a little bit harder, um, but you don't mind that because financially it's very rewarding and also it's rewarding from your heart. It's something, it's like a wish, a dream come true opportunity, okay? So we move on into June then. Now June is about the magician energy for you. 
So whilst a lot of other signs are finding it a little bit of a difficult shift, you're pulling it completely out of the hat. I feel like you are uh, in a very inspired mode where you're finding your confidence, you're finding your feet, you're taking action on something, something you're focusing on, you're accomplishing great things. You recognize that everything you need is within you. When you've got the Magician card, this is about also noticing that your thoughts are becoming things, okay? So Magician energy, there's a real alchemy here, a real action-based month for you. So um, let's see, clarify that Magician for you. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides, Great Angels. Can you please guide my beautiful Cancerians? The Four of Swords. They're basically saying get rest, get ready. Because I feel... Ten of Wands. Yeah, get ready, get your rest, because this is quite a heavy lifting period for you. That Ten of Wands is coming out again. The Seven... Uh, sorry, the Four of Swords there says you are protected um, during uncertain times. Because she's literally sleeping on the moon. And the moon uh, phase can actually represent uncertainty uh, or fear. So I feel with the Four of Swords, it tends to be about you being protected during this uncertain period. But you may have to work a little bit extra or you may feel like you're burning yourself out at, you know, you're making way for new beginnings. We got the Devil card here. Um, and the Devil card is like you may feel stuck or you may feel tempted Hmm. They're giving me this energy. You may feel tempted to rest when you should be working. Ooh, procrastinating. Let me just pull one more. Thank you so much. Because it is a month that calls, calls for action, okay? King of Pentacles. So yeah, they're indicating there's a, there's a lot of money on the other side. Now, whilst Cancerians, you're not working at, for an incentive for, for money. Of course, it's important to have an exchange between your gifts. But they're just giving me this energy. Don't burn yourself out. Also, there may be something here, um, which I'm going to pull a card on that devil card. Because I feel like you may be tempted. Okay. There's two things. You may be tempted to, at moments where you know you should need to work, that you may feel procrastination, okay? But when your heart is really engaged and you're excited about doing something, it doesn't feel like work, so you're up and doing. During moments of when you do what you love, sometimes you can actually overwork yourself because it doesn't feel like work. It feels like you're enjoying yourself, okay? So they want you to know the difference between the two. When it feels heavy and you don't really want to do it, maybe it's not speaking to your heart anymore. But also be mindful of doing too much. So it's about finding a balance. The Emperor in the reverse. Okay, the Emperor in the reverse is to avoid getting stuck. Because I'm clarifying the Devil card there. Avoid the Moon card. Use your intuition. To avoid getting stuck, use your intuition. Okay, to avoid getting stuck, use your intuition. So very important, especially with the planetary alignment being difficult in June. Use that intuition. Okay, you it will lead the way. Um, yeah, they're really highlighting right in the center there. Can you see? There's like a pathway through. So even in the uncertain times, your intuition will lead you down the pathway to overcome the mountains. The mountains represent obstacles. The two pillars are like to keep your focus on the journey ahead. Okay, so uh, just be mindful of that. That's a little note for June time for you. Um, now, as we move into July, we've got the Hierophant again. So this is about almost like you mapping your progress um, and recognizing um, where um, you've learned a lot, uh, but also deepening your commitment. So um, the Hierophant also, again, I feel like there's opportunity for you to commit to someone or something on a deeper level in um, July. I also feel like I just feel Page of Cups energy here. Don't know why. Page of Cups tends to be about an offer popping out of nowhere um, that aligns with your heart, whether that's love or career. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides, Great Angels. Can you please guide? Thank you so much. We've got the Queen of Pentacles. We've got the Page of Swords. And we've got the Knight of Swords. So... Um, the Queen of Pentacles is about your commitment to your goal and dream. Okay, this is about your determination to make your home life secure, uh, looking after yourself and others. You're very generous, uh, but you're committed to uh, a plan. Okay, you're something that you're investigating. So the Hierophant is about seeking knowledge. 
um, and learning, but also about looking at your expectations. What do you expect to learn from this? What do you expect to get out of this situation? Um, and that Queen of Pentacles, she's got a plan. And whenever she needs to activate the next part of the plan, she investigates things a little bit further. We've got Page of Air energy there. So this could be that you uh, are thinking about something that is aligning with your heart or you want to really do, but you may not, uh, you may want to sort of add new skills to your bow as it were. Page of Swords is like a new focus. So I feel like you're learning something new. Uh, you may put yourself on courses online to learn something new or go and join a group there. Um, there's definitely uh, something to financially secure. Um, or boss up. We've got the, those rabbits there in the Queen of Pentacles, which means finances are multiplying based on um, you using your resources wisely, but also opportunities or people coming on in to help you. Uh, I feel some of you will be headhunted during this month as well for what you do. There could be um, someone who comes towards you with some news where uh, it will change your life because we have the, the Knight of Swords there, which is about life-changing energy. And as you can see, she's pointing out painting out the clouds to remove the sun, uh, sorry, to remove the clouds so it does not get in the way of the sun. So you do, you're removing anything that gets in the way of your happiness, okay? Um, now, sorry, they're just showing me something, one moment please. Okay, so they're just showing me a forest Okay, and then a song came, and it's giving me real chills. Uh, you can, I hope you can see that. Um, it's like a Robin, Robin Hood, <laughs> Robin Hood, um, in a forest. I mean, I know the story of Robin Hood. It's is it Sher Robin Hood and the far? Is it the forest of Loxley or Sheringham? I'm not really sure, um, <laughs> but I think it's one of those two. Um, Robin Hood, I'm not sure how Robin Hood, um, Robin Hood took from the rich and gave to the poor. So maybe you were being really generous, um, helping out, out a family member financially, or you are moving to um, a place that is surrounded by forest in some way. Um, Robin Hood. Hmm. Maybe you are being more charitable uh, during that month. Um, but you're, or maybe you're thinking about working for a charity or doing some sort of volunteer work. I'm not really sure how it connects, so please take it as it resonates. Uh, Robin Hood, I mean, you could literally just watch the film um, just before this reading, or uh, it may be um, a nickname that you're given by your friends because you're so generous, um, or you uh, are someone who sort of challenges the status quo in order to fight for people's rights. So please take it as it resonates. It's not going to resonate for everyone. Uh, but I feel like you're deepening your knowledge in order to help you um, sort of move forward on your plans and create a life-changing experience in your world that is really positive. The Knight of Swords always does what is right, leads with integrity, is someone who uh, goes after the truth and nothing but the truth and always finds it, okay? So, um, I feel like you're sort of broadening your perspective as well. Um, you're starting to take action on things for your highest good. There's going to be a real positive outcome. You're going to move quite quickly on something once you learn it. So it could be that you are, um, some of you in terms of love may have met somebody and you decide to move in with that person quicker than you normally move in with anybody. Okay. I feel like it's something that is surprising. Um, I also feel like some of you will be headhunted in your career round about that date, okay? I just feel like the people in power are noticing you, whatever that means, okay? Now, as we move into, I mean, it's not a surprise that the Hierophant happens and then the star. You're being in that spotlight again. You're stepping into the limelight. The star is about inspiration, but it's also about the stars are aligning to put you in a really good position to be seen and be successful. So if you are the sort of person who wants to be in the spotlight or you're, you want to be uh, famous, for example, or you are someone who is has strong social standing in your community, I feel like all eyes are on you, okay? Um, but this is about a wish coming true for you. The stars are aligning to bring you something. Uh, I feel like you're almost checking in as well throughout the year to see how far you've come. Uh, this is about a recognition or reward I also feel like it's like a miracle here. Um, 
something happens for you that you're like, I can't believe it. I can't believe I just thought about this and then it just showed up in my world. There's a real um, synchronicities and meaningful coincidences that happen in this month. Page of Swords. This is the thing that you've been thinking about or the thing that you've been investigating. This could be also that you're headhunted. Someone's curious about you. This is something that... If you can see, this person has got their hand on their heart and they're a scholar. Okay, so that Hierophant is about learning. So something that you learnt, there's like seeds being sown all over the place, um, spreading knowledge. I feel like you are... It's almost like... Someone hears about you and comes seeking you, as it were. I feel like you, your work or your your is speaking for you. It's, it's getting people are noticing. That's what I just feel. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Spirit Guides, Great Angels. Can you please success? I mean, it's the Six of Wands again. I mean, the same cards keep popping up for you throughout the year, which means this is going to be a very successful year where pockets are spent receiving a lot of really good news, uh, and then you finding um, you know something that really interests you and takes you in a different direction and then feeling uh, pockets moments where you can uh, spiritually align yourself and come back to your center and just sort of uh, take a rest but I feel like it's very sort of positive movement everything's in balance but it's like a reward here so I feel you could also uh, have someone come towards you pages bring news so I feel like there's news of some sort of reward or success here coming on in but this could also be someone is very curious about how you are being successful in what you do and they may ask you for some advice so you may find that uh, you are generous and open up your advice to somebody the star is about inspiration it's about being encouraged showing that you're on the right path there's like a new beginning. You may even uh, decide to implement some sort of um, new energy. Uh, this very hopeful energy. You start to look towards the future with a lot of hope. Unfortunately, we've got the devil card here uh, right after it. So you may be sort of, um, you may come up with a bit of a, up against a bit of a brick wall in the following month because you're riding high throughout the rest of the year. Now, it's worth noting that Jupiter um, is very relevant to you because it's in Pisces, which is a fellow water element. So you're going to receive a lot of good luck and opportunity in the first half of the year. But then, of course, we head into um, the um, September period that uh, the devil card shows up. So let me see what the devil card is for you. This could be obsession. It could also be... Um, obstacle we all get to the devil card eventually in our journey in our own personal journeys because each card from the major arcanas represent the human condition and our journey throughout our life okay so we all come up against a blockage the devil card is not an evil card it actually is to make you aware of what you have bound yourself to where you feel stuck where you feel tempted to go. So for example, if there's someone who returns from your past who's an ex-lover, um, you know, you may find um, that if you're feeling like you're procrastinating or you're feeling um, at a moment where you're feeling lonely or at a low ebb, you may be tempted to um, reconnect to that person, even though before you may have ignored that person's advances to come back into your life, but you may feel compelled to do it if you're at, um, you know, a, a low ebb or at a downtime moment in September. Remember, um, they just give me a sentence which I found, which I'm finding very profound, which is um, don't drink poison just because you're thirsty. Wow, I'm getting true chills with that as well. Um, don't drink poison just because you're thirsty. So if there's someone who's toxic in your world or a situation that is toxic in your world, but you feel like there's no other opportunity or you feel like there's nothing else going on at the moment, don't reach for the poison chalice just because it's the only thing that's on offer, right, uh, is what they're giving me. Now, let me just clarify that uh, for some reason. It's coming out as the Knight of Cups and the Emperor. Okay, so uh, let me just clarify with a different deck why the Devil card first. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides, Great Angels. Can you please guide how would you like to receive? Thank you. The Wheel of Fortune. Okay, so there was a relationship that was very unbalanced. 
Um, this could have been a toxic relationship, something that you gave to. Um, it's in the Six of Pentacles is in the reverse, so I feel like you gave a lot to this situation with little reward. Okay, the Wheel of Fortune says there is a destined relationship or there is a destined um, opportunity for you to do something that you love coming on in, but. I would be mindful of over giving because I feel like it's a pattern that you may be stuck in. Okay, let me just, because the Wheel of Fortune tends to highlight um, cycles that we are in. Sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down. It's a return for sure. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that energy. Uh, I mean, we've got this, we've got the uh, five of swords there in the reverse so this is like someone wanting it's almost like someone waving a white flag wanting peace and we've got the six of cups there which is nostalgia it is about looking back someone longing yearning to be back in your company okay um now this person could have had some sort of toxic energy or could have been someone you were obsessed with or they were obsessed with you um but they did not fully have their energy in a relationship. This person's coming back for peace. They want to reunite with you. They want to make amends with you, especially since we have a Knight of Cups here and the Emperor. So I do feel like there is a potential for you to have a choice uh, in love in 2022, if you're looking for love. I mean, if you've been going through difficulties with your partner, um, I feel like you overcome those difficulties by remembering why you love each other in the first place and finding, um, you know, a way to stop sabotaging um, your own energies in the relationship because sometimes we sabotage ourselves out of fear when we feel like we're going too deep when things are getting too raw when our heart is so exposed we get panicked we get so um, worried that we're going to be destroyed so we start to find reasons why to disconnect from a person oh they didn't text us and so they probably didn't they're probably not thinking about us or they probably don't love us or you know we all find an escape route when we are feeling uh, either negative or worried, okay? It's a natural human emotion. You may wonder um, sometimes where you talk yourself out of the situation. It means you're sabotaging yourself out of fear, okay? So, um, but if your intuition is saying, don't go down this route, listen to it, okay? Um, so know the difference between when your head and your heart are engaged. Uh, I do feel like this person, um, this is someone you feel bonded to, attached to, that you could not get over. That's why the devil card is showing up. Um, I feel like this person wants to reunite. They want to open their heart fully after being someone who um, was very, very closed in terms of their emotions. Use your intuition. Um, let me just see. Can you show me their true intentions? This is someone who reaches out throughout the year, okay? This is someone who keeps coming in and out of your life. This person never really truly leaves your life. Ten of Pentacles. This person wants to settle down with you. They want to get married with you. Uh, Ten of Pentacles. I just wanted to clarify one more thing. Yeah. Um, they do love you, absolutely. I just want to make sure they don't want to come back for money. Uh, no, they actually do love you. They found that the grass is not greener everywhere else. They just want to be with you. They're feeling fed up and unfulfilled, and they're yearning to be back with you because that's where the love's at. This person's recognizing what's important in life, okay? So use your intuition, of course. They feel like you're a missed opportunity, but they want to invest fully in a relationship with you. Uh, that keeps coming up in this, so I feel like you may be undecided or you may, uh, you know, put the break on this and really think about it. Uh, but I feel like this person really wants to invest fully. Now, in terms of uh, career, if you're not looking for love in this particular month, um, I would be mindful of uh, the way that you approach success and business and that you don't get stuck in an energy of um, thinking about the money, materialism, okay? Whilst it's wonderful to get blindsided by money in terms of a career, think about all your energy. They really want you to invest your heart in the situation and more money will flow from there, okay? So I do feel like there's lots of opportunities for you to be very successful. Some of you are actually gonna step into a leadership role, be a CEO, maybe even of your own company. They really want you to make sure your heart is in it and you're doing it all for the right reasons, okay? Because when you follow your heart, success is even bigger and better than you can ever imagine and the money will flow from there. But when we start thinking about wanting to achieve because it's more money and we obsess about the money, we actually start to disengage with our heart. We start to become exhausted. We start to become, so I feel this is about them sort of 
making you realize that there is an offer here to do something you absolutely love and be so successful at it. But just don't get yourself stuck in situations that your heart are not in, okay? Uh, that's an obvious thing to say, I guess, um, but they want me to give that to you for a reason. Now, they're just showing me a funnel. You know a funnel? You know, it's got like a little stem there, a little funnel when you pour something in there to, I don't know, put it in a bottle or something like that. They're just show me a funnel. So um, maybe you're using one of those as you're listening to this reading. I'm not really sure. Uh, so please take it as it resonates. It could be about streamlining your energy. You know, if you think about a funnel, you can put a lot in the top, but it actually goes through this little hole and it streamlines it. So it's about condensing. So it could be about that. You condensing your energy, your dreams, condensing it to doing something that you love. You know, you can have fingers in many pies, but it can lead you to be exhausted. So really focus on the things that matter is what they're showing me. Now we've got the full card. This is in October. So this is about being curious. It's about that childlike spirit, remembering to have fun. Success is wonderful, but remember to enjoy it. Okay, my beautiful Cancerians. Now, some of you, I'm feeling a real vibe to go traveling with this card, um, go on an adventure. Um, so there could be a new path opening up to you here, a new beginning. Um, and I feel like you may take a risk or a leap of faith in some area. Uh, in order to create something new. So let us see what's going on there because I feel like your curiosity is really peaked in this month. Thank you so much, Spirit Guys, Great Angels. There's a lot of enthusiasm that's coming from that card. Can you please guide my beautiful Cancerians? What do they need to know? We got two of cups. So definitely a love relationship here or some sort of partnership. We got temperance and balance. Everything is in harmony. Okay, so... This could be, um, you know, as we have the Emperor energy here and um, the Nine of Cups, this could be about you really fully settling down with someone, um, creating balance. I mean, it could be even a business partnership. The Two of Cups is like being curious with the Fool card to have a new start, maybe a partnership in business or a partnership with someone who's on the same page as you. This card can also talk about twin flame energy um, because as you can see, they're both identical. So this is about unity, balance, harmony. It's not an accident that you've got the exact same card that means balance, harmony. So I feel like this is about temper your um, desire to um, take a risk, I would say. I would say, you know, get advice from other people. Don't just dive on all into something. Activate patience, uh, due diligence, um, maybe ask friends, uh, you know, if you're signing contracts and things like that, because sometimes two of cups can be about proposals to merge with others. Um, I would, you know, um, actively seek um, a balanced opinion with other people there. Um, the two of cups is about aligning yourself with what you truly desire and having a fair exchange given back. So whether that's in love for you, whether that's in career, I feel like this is a fair exchange, fair balance, and you examining your priorities. So some of you may actually go into business with your partner, okay? Um, but I feel like this is something new though. This is something curious that you're excited about. Um, I'm going to go one more just to make sure. It's going super cold here where I'm at. So maybe some of you are going, thinking about traveling with your partner to somewhere uh, wintry. Um, Maybe you've got something booked like, because uh, right now they're showing me lots of lights in the sky. So maybe you're thinking about going to Iceland or somewhere where you could see the northern lights. I'd like to receive. We got the Knight of Wands in the reverse. And the Page of Cups. So there's that Page of Cups there. So the Knight of, Wa uh, Knight of Wands in the reverse says don't be impulsive, okay? Um, patience. Um, don't like run off and act on something. Because it looks like the Page of Cups, uh, Page of Cups basically says, follow your heart, follow your bliss. But there is something popping up, an opportunity that you love is popping up or love is popping up. It is a surprise. Um, now, this can also talk about uh, news to do with something that you love. Or you're curious about something and you get news on it. I feel this is about don't be impulsive with it, though. Really do your dil diligence. Make sure you get a, a broad idea of what's going on here. I mean, this could be also that someone that you thought was a player 
or someone that you couldn't quite pin down in a relationship, maybe you and this person have been in and out of each other's lives, you finally decide to come into some sort of harmony and balance and actually um, express your love for each other and commit to each other. You take a leap of faith, as it were, um, but do it with your intuition, okay? Now, we move into the Chariot card, which is in November. The Chariot is about success. It is a Cancerian energy. It's number seven, so it's a lucky number, but it's about um, being self-assured. It's about recognizing that you can overcome any challenge that's set to you. As long as you've got that motivation, that drive, you can be victorious. The Chariot card is movement. So, um, as I said, I feel like you could be curious about some sort of travel or move, move here with the Chariot card. Um, I feel the chariot card though, this is about some sort of accomplishment for you. The chariot card is a win. It is essential to your growth. Uh, this is about you living freely and truthfully, fearfully and skillfully. Okay, so I feel like you've got, you're in control of something. You're in control of your destiny with this card. Yeah, look at that, seven of wands. You're in control. You're, you're persevering on something you're showing what you're made of the seven of wands tends to be about you being at your personal dis uh, best going the distance not conforming persevering on something engaging in sustained effort finding that motivation that drive to sort of trust your vision and make it happen you're being inspired okay to show that you're strong enough to do this as you can see, this figure, the strong man there, is in a cage. He's coming out of the cage. He's coming out of this unstuck. He's coming unstuck. And um, he's living life on his own terms. He's not going to be pigeonholed by anybody or anything. Also, he's got the whole journey of his life etched on his body, which we all do, actually. We all have that sort of uh, tension or that energy etched on our souls. That's why people, especially the ancestors, they always say release the baggage because we carry it with us until we process it and leave it. So as you can see, you're recognizing um, the struggle that you've had, that fight or flight. There's two people fighting there around about the gut instinct. Then we've got love written on his shoulder there. So war love on his sleeve. And we've also got toxic energy. So he's dealt with toxicity in the past. An anchor feeling emotionally uh, sort of stable. So there's lots of You've, you've, you've endured a lot, is what they're saying, and you're strong enough to overcome those obstacles and be victorious. And they want you to recognize that. So I feel like this is a month where you really take stock on how far you've come, how much you've endured, and how strong you've been to get you to this position. And we got a little fortune. You're the only sign uh, leading uh, the end of the year on such a high note. This is success. This is fate intervening to bring you a lucky break. This is destiny meeting synchronicity. I feel like anything that you truly take a risk or gamble on throughout the year is going to pay off. As long as you engage your intuition and do your due diligence, don't rush anything. Don't ever feel forced or rushed to do anything as well. But if you've been in a cycle over the last couple of years of feeling stuck or that uh, luck has not been on your side, I feel like this is you recognizing that this year has been quite a fortunate year for you. I do feel like destiny and fate intervene to bring you... Um, some real moments of prosperity. I'm just going to clarify this Wheel of Fortune for you before we close the reading. Thank you so much, Spirit Guys, Going Angels. The Death Card. This is as you close out the year, as you change uh, from one state to another. Um, the Death Card is about ending old patterns, old familiar patterns that may have held you back or made you feel fear. This is you releasing the cycle as you close out the year and looking at where you feel lucky. Okay, uh, we've also got the world. I mean, the two cards are literally closing out the year. You're leaving the year on a high. Okay, so I feel there's a lot of positive energy here. Um, and I feel like it's like a brand new world. Oh, what's that song? Sorry, it's getting really cold. The song is a brand new world. <laughs> That's the song that you're giving me. Now, I don't really watch Disney and things like that, um, you know. So, I mean, is that from something called Frozen? I, I've heard that been bandied around a lot and people sing it. I'm not really sure if it's connected. A brand new world. I feel like it's a duet song, but th they're just giving me like that part of it. But anyway, I'm going to have to research that myself. I'm not really sure. Brand new world. Maybe this, maybe this is a signifier that, um, you know, there's a positive shift 
and an end to things that have been quite difficult in a world cycle that we've been going through for the last couple of years. Um, but I feel like you're leaving the year on a real high, a real positive note, okay? So I'm just going to close your reading by getting any final advice from Spirit of what to look out for for the year ahead. Anything they would like you to focus on or know. Thank you so much, Spirit Guys, Great Angels. Can you please guide my beautiful Cancerians? What do they need to know? Now, they just showed me someone um, getting a spoon, and it looks like they've just been stirring something, and they went ding, 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 on the side of whatever it is they were stirring. So if that's you, there's something in this message for you, okay? It's not going to message for everyone. And also, they gave, they're giving me, um, you know when your laptop or computer is on, and there's like a, a ding, like from a message, they've, uh, it's not a phone. They're showing me very much specifically that it's not a ding from a phone. It's a ding from a computer or a laptop or something like that. So um, if that's you, there's something in this message for you. Also, again, I feel like it signals, it's a really positive message, whatever it is, okay? It's number 15, we've got here the chakras. So you are aligning, alignment, energy, awareness. Listen to your body, unlock free-flowing positivity and spiritual power within you. As I said, I feel like it's going to be a very spiritual, philosophical year for you. You're coming into alignment so and into balance. It's really exciting energy for you, okay? I'm just going to uh, get you a trinket before we close. What oh, they want that one? I'm laughing because I heard what they just said to me. They said, they said there's some Disney for you. I'm like, what? Uh, and now I see what they mean. So you've got the planetary alignment key, okay? So a key is unlocking uh, your gifts, but also your potential and your prosperity this year. As you can see, I hope you can see that the little nubbin there on it is a heart. Okay, so the key to unlocking it all is following your heart. But the Disney thing they're talking about, if you look at that, I mean, doesn't it look like Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse's like head and ears. <laughs> so um, spirit's quite funny sometimes. So thank you so much. I'm sure grateful. But um, I mean, some of you actually, maybe you're planning a trip to Disney. I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, the key to unlocking it all, the planetary alignments are very important for you in particular, my beautiful Cancerians. Okay. Jupiter is really favoring you throughout the year. And um, I do feel like you're protected and redirected at moments of any discourse, you know, life is full of ups and downs, of course, plot twists. You've got pretty positive year. Uh, I would say there's a little bit of a pause hang right about April for you. Um, and we've got the devil card energy uh, around about September. So those are the two hotspot months that I would say, just be a little bit mindful, keep your eyes open. Um, maybe the full card energy in Sept uh, October, I'd say just take it a little bit slowly, don't rush anything. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty positive. Now they want me to put this on the chariot card for you. The key to unlocking prosperity moving forward is following your heart. So I'll leave it there. I hope something resonates in this reading for you, my beautiful Cancerians. If it does, please like and subscribe to my channel. Completely free for you. All you have to do is press a little bell that lets you know when I update my next message. It lets me know that you resonate with the reading, which is very important for me. Thank you so much, my beautiful Cancerians. Love and light.